When we're doing a video link, such as with the South Pole, what's happening? How many hops are happening there to get the signal here? So with the South Pole, it's a pretty unique set of satellite circuits to enable it to happen. At the Australian Antarctic stations, which are around the coast of Antarctica, we can actually see what are called the uh, geostationary satellites that, that are sitting in orbits over the equator. The South Pole is too far south to see those. From a, from a, you might be able to see those satellites down to about 75 degrees south. The South Pole, being at the South Pole at, at 90 degrees south, um, cannot see the geostationary satellites. As those, sta those satellites are held over the equator by using fuel on board the satellites to keep them positioned at, at the right spot over the equator. At the end of the life of those satellites, they're generally running out of fuel or have much less fuel to use. And so they're, they're allowed to drift um, out of the, the main orbit. And as they drift south, uh, at certain times of the day, the South Pole is then able to see those satellites. And for a, sh a number of hours a day, uh, the South Pole utilises those satellites, sends a signal over them. Uh, they're brought down in, in the US at, at various ground stations in the US. So to, to run that video conference um, from the South Pole, they we had to pick the time when the, a satellite would be visible to the South Pole. They would then have their network or their, their data network would be running over the satellite. Um, they then just use a standard video conference equipment uh, running over an, an IP network, comes down in the US and then basically on, on the normal optical fibre uh, um, internet system comes across to Australia then in, into our um, setup here at Tingston and onto a standard video conference unit here. How do you communicate with the Australian stations in Antarctica? Mm. So the Australian stations we're able to utilise the geostationary satellites so we actually use Intelsat uh, satellites uh, and we operate a dedicated data link to each of our four stations, running a generally around about 512 kilobits per second, which really is, is very slow in terms of your average um, home um, internet circuit these days, which is running at one or more megabits per second probably. So we're running a whole station on around about half that. We provide our voice, uh, telephone system, our email, our internet browsing, all over those, those fairly small data links but they are 24 hour 24 by 7 uh, data links as opposed to the ones to the, the South Pole which are just a few hours a day. So is the Australian Antarctic Broadband Project directly applicable to Australian stations or does it have wider application? Uh, I think it has, has wider applications. For us at the moment we see it probably more as a backup form of communication for actual stations around the coast of Antarctica but we see it playing a, a probably a, a good role or large role for our inland um, work. So as we progress with um, doing Travis into the inland of Antarctica, it would provide our main form of communications for, for that, for scientific equipment on board the Travis. Once the Antarctic Broadband Project is up and running, who will be its biggest customer? I think at this stage it is certainly the, the US uh, Antarctic program and particularly the South Pole. Other nations would, are certainly also interested, such as, say, with the, the French and Italians with their station at, at Concordia. Um, at the moment, they mostly use Imarsat communications, so I would, would imagine that they'd be certainly interested in the Antarctic Broadband Program uh, when it becomes uh, online. And then there are other, you know, other nations as well, but I think the US would be the main one at this stage. Is an Antarctic Broadband Project, do you think, something that Australia should run for itself as a, as a national service or should we be creating something that all nations should share in the spirit of the Antarctic Treaty? I, I think you're your last point's correct there, Mark, in that Antarctic operates as a as a collaborat collaboration of all the, the nations involved in Antarctica. Therefore, I think any sort of Antarctic broadband project would be best served by, um, again, a collaborative project amongst a number of, of nations.